And welcome to those that are watching what we're doing here at home on YouTube for us today. We are here with us in spirit, and we welcome everyone. Well, a few words uh, of announcement to point out some information from the bulletin, and maybe as any of you received a poster of your own. Join the journey through land. Now, that doesn't begin with a few months, but I have a friend in California that sent me a copy of this over the years. It's also one for Advent. And it's kind of like something you can do with yourself on a body of land on a daily basis. You can throw it in if you like. That's something that's just one of a couple of things that the church will provide to help you journey through that for research. What's the other hand out there? Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, you'll get it. You'll get it next Sunday. You'll get it in the bulletin. 
There will be something else in the book that's in the There's a point to begin with. Um, as I poke around coming in, there's cards, there's envelopes over there. If you need an envelope, there are envelopes. If you have a prayer request, there are these blue cards that you can put your prayer requests on and leave them in the plate or hold them to your deacon. Also, on the reverse side is a welcome card. If you want to leave any information or if you know someone that's just a guest with us, you can welcome the card. And I will not be here to make any announcement or check during the next few weeks. Series and unlocking and then unlocking the tomb of the Bible week, the witnesses to the resurrection as we move towards Easter and celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We'll take a look at how different men and women in the New Testament explained it or understood it. So we'll be unlocking the tomb, and I hope you might. To join us beginning Sunday, March 6th. Now, we have some much more interesting information about the resurrection. People were so, so happy. Okay, so I really think it's fun. 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 Collection we've got because the collection is always available. Are announcements that we need to make about the announcements that we need to be on? We can get to the bulletin or the phone call to the sweater club if you have an announcement. Let's continue on the next week. Good Sunday in Paul. As we gather today, we listen for the voice of God wherever we're located. We listen for the voice of God in the verse. So I want to say, we listen for the voice of God in the words.
still not trying to hear them in a moment of stress. Do you listen to the sounds of the one day? Do you listen to the thoughts of the other? In a moment of stress, do you have to hear how God is praying for God's grace? Each one of us is yearning to thank God in different ways. Some of us are thankful for you today. Just in your own mind, think about something to be grateful for. For Thanksgiving, if you are. Before we share the concerns of our mind, let us pause to speak our truth to God. Loving God, we are so afraid of ideas that can touch us, of people who seem different, of challenges we can wrap in our fits. And in response to our fear, we draw our fears. We may try to be smooth enough rather than. Help us to be more Christ in the world. And let us continue to share with one another, asking God for the concerns in our hearts and in our minds. So dear joys and concerns will come to share with us in the future. Well, last week we ended up doing the experiment of bringing the speaker out to the congregation to uh, to speak, and I got a very good response from Zoom so that they can hear the the prayer in the person. So we're going to do that again. So uh, Mary Ann, can I see you? So uh, if you could just raise your hand, Mary Ann's going to come to you, and if you can just state your name in the yeah, prayer. Or, or you yeah. Well, we've got a tech squad working today. <laughs> Okay, we just had the heart surgery at the beginning of the eye center. The Botox continued to see went south and made him more unable to see. So Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock, she was in bed. Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock for prayers. Lord in your mercy. I'd like to just pray for the people of Ukraine. Definitely. Pray for the whole situation. And Eastern Europe, especially the people of Ukraine, who pray more than the Romans. We pray for Jim and his rehab that he'll return to complete mobility and good health. Lord, in your mercy. I like to pray for Marie today, and also Debbie is also a service, but I like to pray for For Marie and Debbie, we pray today for their individual needs and concerns. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. We like to pray for our family and our family. And we love to pray for our family and our family. Take care of your family. Yes, we are. Thank you for helping your family, for the men and women of our armed forces, and for those leaders that are making critical decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Thank you for the woman we met yesterday. Thank you for the woman we Tony is the name? Well, for that good work, and a simple thing like passing out socks leads you into a uh, encounter or relationship. So we pray for Tony and her daughter and all that they face. Lord, in your mercy, 
Okay, everybody, the first round was very good. They just, uh, the, they asked again, just state, state your name before so they know who's saying it. We all know because we can see, but if you can just say it. All else was good, good going. <laughs> Thanks for the feedback from our Zoomers there. Oh, and Pastor, speak up a little. That was the <laughs> Okay. Gwen is laughing, so you've done well. Uh, we're watching you too. <laughs> we take a moment then in silence to bring our thoughts together in the mercy and love of God. As we just inhale that Holy Spirit that we might relax into God's presence and exhale all worries and anxieties at this moment. There is so much going on in the world that we cannot control, but we can give thanks and control what we have here in this moment and be at peace and find Christ's presence. And then saying, God who speaks and who hears, they remember that it is you who worship, and you are here with us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the glory forever. God speaks peace and hopes to our fears. God encourages our resources. God helps us to see and act clearly. As people of faith, thanks be to God, our God's grace that leads to faithfulness. And the hymn of praise is to make your way to God the Lord. We want to follow along in the hymn 706. <laughs>
As we read the words of Scripture, we are pointed to your living word that would walk among us. We are surrounded by your spirit who whispers words in our hearts and minds. Inspire us in our hearing and understanding that we may move beyond just words to actions. Guide us in these life changing acts of grace, love, hope, and peace. It was supposed to be me, but I forgot the book. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> then we'll move on to the scripture reading. This morning, the Old Testament lesson comes to Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 to 11. Joseph spoke to his brothers I am Joseph. Is my father really still alive? But his brothers couldn't say a word. They were speechless. They could not believe what they were hearing and seeing. Come closer to me, Joseph, Joseph said to his brothers. He came closer. I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold in Egypt. But don't feel bad, me. don't blame yourselves for selling me. God was behind you. God sent you here ahead of you to save lives. There has been famine in the land now for two years. The famine will continue for five years. <clears throat> Neither plowing nor harvesting. God sent me ahead to take the way and to make sure there was a remnant in the land to save your lives in an amazing act of deliverance. So you see, it wasn't you who said me here, but God. He sent me in place as the father to Pharaoh. He put me in charge of his personal affairs and made me ruler of Egypt. Hurry back to my father. Tell him. Your son Joseph says, I am master of all Egypt. Come as fast as you can and join me here. I will give you a place to live in fellowship. You will be close to me. You, your children, your grandchildren, your flocks, your purse, and anything else you can think of. I'll take care of you there. Please. There are still five more years of family ahead. I'll make sure all your needs are taken care of. And you and everyone connected with you, you won't want for a take. And the second reading for this morning's gospel is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verses 27 through 38. <clears throat> Going to be a dual reading this morning. First, from a more recognized, revised standard version, newly revised standard version, and then from the message, which seems to be a little more contemporary. So, just a portion of that first reading. Listen with new understanding to the word of the Lord. The new revised standard. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that for you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. Well, changing the tempo a little from the message. To you who are ready for the truth, I say this, love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the supple moves of prayer for that person. If someone slaps you in the face, stand there and take it. If someone grabs your shirt, give wrap your best coat and make a present. If someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to 
practice of service life. No more pay back. Live generously. Here is a simple rule of thumb for the table. Ask yourself, what you want people to do for you, then grab the initiative and do it for them. If you only love the lovable people with the step to pat on the back, <coughs> none of the middle sinners do that. If you only help those who help you, do you expect a medal? Garden variety sinners do that. If you only give for what you hope to get out of it, do you think that's charity? The stingiest corn workers does that. I tell you, love your enemies, help and give without expecting a return. You'll never, I promise, regret it. Live out this God created identity the way our Father lives towards us. <clears throat> generously and graciously even when you're at the worst of father's time you will come don't pick on people jump on their failures criticize the faults unless of course you want the same treatment don't condemn those who are down that parties can move away. be easy on people you'll find life a lot easier Give away your life, you'll find life given back. But not merely given back. Given, given back with bonus and blessing. Given, not given, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. And Lord, may the Holy Spirit help us to understand these difficult words in Christ's name. <clears throat> so, Obviously, it seems as I hear these words read, these are readings about forgiveness. Joseph forgiving his brothers who sold him into slavery, and Luke here encouraging us to forgive, even pray for our enemies. That's hard language to hear when the news is filled about this crisis in Eastern Europe and uh, Ukraine forgiving our enemies, forgiving the Russians. I, I kind of heard this scripture more about hypocrisy than about forgiveness. Or is it more about compassionate thinking? I was all over the map reading this scripture, trying to get a hold on it. I came through a very evangelical college and seminar where they often talked about the word, getting into the word, believing the word, living the word. And every word of the Bible was taken seriously. They often talked about following every word of the Bible because it's inspired, it's in error, it's without error. Except when it came to these passages of forgiving enemies, praying for those who hate you, and giving away your shirt and your coat. That always seemed to be explained away somehow, as if these words, loving their enemies, were not really to be taken all that seriously. You know, you can love your enemies up to a point, but let's not get carried away and really love those Russians uh, and those, those Russians. And uh, back in the day, it was more of the red peril. Come on, Red, be serious. Love your enemies. There's always that note of hmm, get into the word, but uh, be realistic about it. So those messages were going around in my head inside like this. And the image of all that came to me as I was reading this is that iconic scene from The Godfather 
Well, there was one, two, or three, I can't remember, when Michael is having his children baptized, and you get pictures of Michael and his family in the church and the priest is reading. Uh, do you renounce all the works of the devil and Satan? And my like, yes, I do renounce them. And in the next scene, he's having his enemies slaughtered. Someone shot, someone shot over here coming out of the courthouse. Do you renounce the works of the devil? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce them? Yes, I renounce that. All the while, this evil and hatred that is going on all around. Now, I hope you didn't hear those words. That's just my crazy thinking as I read these passages. What is going on? Forgive and forget is loving your enemies and forgiving abuse that you take. That doesn't sound so right to me either, especially if you've been in an abusive relationship. No, it's not easy to forgive and forget. How those people at our manual, AME, African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina could forgive Dylan Booth when he came into a Bible study, pulled out a weapon and killed nine people in that church. Almost immediately there were reports of how they spoke words of forgiveness. That was amazing. To have such faith almost beyond me. Loving the enemies, forgiving them? I think it's more of a process. I mean, when I've spoken to people who have come through abusive relationships, they say, Pastor, I'm told to forgive and forget, and I have to forgive them as it's slow yeah. It's not that easy or simple. You don't have to forgive them right away. There's a process, almost like a court process, where they have to acknowledge their wrongdoing, they have to repent of their wrongdoing, they have to see that it's a part of the AA 12-step program, they have to acknowledge past wrongs and as much as possible go back and amend those past wrongs. I don't know if I ever mentioned that I was a prison chaplain here in New Jersey for about five years. And on a weekly basis, I was preaching at Avenel Prison up in Avenel. And one of the ways I illustrated this type of need for forgiveness and repentance and repairing was let <clears> me <throat> just take a piece of this paper. I walked around the sanctuary and oh, kind of threw the paper around. Oh, yeah, how are you doing? Oh, I want to use my zoom here and throw this paper around and hey, 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 pitches. Look at the mess you made here. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, forgive me. I, I did make a mess. Well, who's going to clean it up? Oh, oh, uh, uh, me? But I said, Forgive me, I was sorry for that. Yeah, but someone still has to go around and pick up the mess you made. But, and honestly, I've got this, but Jesus forgives me. Yeah, Jesus forgives you. But still, you got to pick up the mess you made. You've got to repent of that. You've got to go back and clean up what you've left behind. Oh, no. Uh, Jesus forgave me. I should be able just to get right out. No. That's not the way it is. So there's a process of forgiveness that I was thinking about here as I read this, and I still didn't get all of that understanding. I kept reading it, reading it. 
judging others, loving your enemies. So here's what I thought we had to do. We had to go back. We had to look, what did Luke write prior to this loving your enemies? And what came after? Uh, I could have printed it out, or I could suggest to you that you open your Bibles and look at what he wrote ahead of time. First of all, in the beginning of chapter 6, he has Jesus breaking one of the Ten Commandments. What? Jesus breaking the commandments? Yes. Uh, the fourth commandment, especially. We go back to Exodus 20 and we look up the commandments, and the fourth one is honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. And it's quite an extensive commandment. Honor the Sabbath, keep it holy. Do not do any work or labor on the Sabbath, not you, not your family. Not your manservant, not your woman servant, not your slaves, no one in your family is to work on the Sabbath because the Lord rested on the Sabbath. I'm old enough to remember a time, and people reported to me they grew up in strict Presbyterian homes, which I didn't, where they didn't watch television on the Sabbath. You didn't play cards on the Sabbath. You didn't go out on the Sabbath. You went to church. You went to church in the morning. And then, if they had an evening service, you went to church in the evening. And in between, you had a nice lunch, maybe you go to sleep. Uh, but you didn't do anything else. No television, no playing, no cards, just resting. Well, Jesus did not rest on the Sabbath. He breaks the Sabbath in two different stories. One, he has his disciples go through the field collecting grain to cook and eat, breaking the Sabbath commandment, and he's called out on this. He says, oh, no problem. The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. And then he heals a man on the Sabbath. And the religious authorities again call them out on it. What are you doing? Hey, on the Sabbath, can you heal or heal? You can heal. So, um, right off, Luke is telling us the Lord is breaking some commandments. That's followed up with all of these uh, blessings and curses. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are you who come to you shall be good. Blessed are you when people hate you. And woe to you when you're full, because you will go hungry. And woe to you if you're laughing, you will mourn and weep. What is going on here? And then, this whole thing about loving your enemies. Am I losing any of you? See how crazy this is? Well, I think the clincher comes in the next chapter. And it, uh, I even looked it up. Um, Jesus in the next chapter goes out and he heals the servant of the enemy's military commander. Chapter 7 Jesus heals a centurion's. Servant, the uh, occupational enemy's servant, the command. And then he raises the widow's son and name. And they say, as this concludes, he says of the centurion, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And then it ends with this Donald, where is it? Uh, a great prophet has risen among us, 
and God has looked favorably from his people. After all of this, if you're still with me, loving enemies, woes and curses, the affirmation that Luke ends with, God loves and cares for his people. So maybe in the end, all of this stories and teaching is simply about that. Loving and caring for each other. Loving and caring for all people. Loving, caring, healing, restoring, being part of God's people who are rebuilding a broken world. Being part of a community of broken people who are repairing the broken world. We're trying to care for enemies, diffuse hostile situations. That's why praying for this situation in Ukraine is so critical for us right now. It's trying to diffuse a situation that has the potential of angry, heartbreak, heartbreak, and death. If things spiral out of control. So we are praying for our enemies, looking to heal broken world. We're praying for our neighbors and friends whose bodies are broken with illness or anxieties or all those things that can weigh on our mind. Healing and repair and brokenness. Five mind and soul who didn't carry the way of life. Someone once said, It just, what do you do then? Oh, just talk until God gives me something to say. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept talking here, and that seemed to be like the Spirit opening up this. These are words about repairing. Healing, restoring ourselves, our community, our world. And my hands like on this no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. So the fruit that we're bringing into life is good fruit. Helping people at St. Mary's with socks. And I'm told homeless people just need socks. So they're healing, repairing, loving. Let me just say it there. Trust in God, the Holy Spirit. Every other giver can be a work of love. So the Spirit says us what we do to set ourselves up and to love God in the name of God. us together and cause women and men all the present in life. The very place of perfect prayer. You hear the voice of the people along silence and the work of the others. I should say to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to the world joyful lives. Let us offer the peace of Christ to one. Through God's love, the church comes to life. Through God's love, you 
and here as we come to the end of our worship, Lord, cleanse the depths within our souls and give resentment cease. And by your mercy, reconcile our lives to spread your peace. In Hebrew, it is called being a repairer of the world. In the world. Ikon Olam. Go forth. Be among those who repair this damaged world. Bring love and peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace. Our service is in.